oh, this is weird. Ignore me and my Pedialyte. Hey everybody. So I haven't posted on YouTube in a hot two years. <laughs> um, I haven't posted on Instagram in just under a year. And I miss you guys a lot. And I don't want to abandon this YouTube channel. And I want to give you guys an update and tell you what happened, tell you why I left, uh, why I stopped creating content, what was going on with me. Just kind of give y'all a life update and just talk to you guys. So I guess let's just start at the beginning. So as I'm assuming all of you know, um, in 2021, after the border, was it after the border opened up? Around the time the border opened up, I moved to Canada to start my life with my then partner, Mason. And uh, obviously like creating content in that time was a little weird because I was moving and I was getting adjusted into a new schedule and I was going back to school. So creating content then was really weird. Um, I moved in September of 2021 and by February 2022, uh, that relationship had ended. So it was a whirlwind to, to say the least. And I don't want to get into details about my personal relationship because you guys know, I'll tell you all the details of my life, but it's also involving another person's life that I don't really want to spread their business. So the two relationships that I'm talking about, gonna keep pretty vague and I just ask that you respect that because while I feel comfortable telling my story, it's not all my story. So um, that relationship ended and then uh, I just threw myself, we were non-monogamous at the time, and so I did have another partner um, and I dove straight in to that other partner and um, moved in with him uh, after less than six months of dating because I had nowhere to go in Canada. If I wanted to stay in Canada, I needed to, you know, make a move and I made the move. And then three months after that, we bought the truck and trailer together. And three months after that, we were on the road together, living in a 20 foot tra travel trailer. Um, and that experience was amazing. And uh, I would love to do a video on that experience by itself about, you know, living in a travel trailer, van life, even though we technically weren't in a van. And then we lived in that trailer for a year and a half. And then we got a house and then we broke up. And now I am back in my hometown of Washington State, uh, in Washington State. Uh, I have my own apartment. This is, this is my place. Some of you guys might recognize some of the artwork and things up. Uh, and I am basically rebuilding my life because for those, like, I, since I moved to Canada, I just lost myself. I lost myself in the relationship, in the new life that I wanted to build, in this new, like, person that I wanted to be. And, like, I, I just lost sight of myself. And the last two years were the most depressed I have ever been in my whole life. The most like, I don't know, it sounds really dramatic, but like the most like hopeless I have ever felt. It was really gnarly and it was all for the sake of trying to fit myself into a mold that I did not belong in. And all for fear that I wasn't good enough just as is. And I wanna just say that I think while being vague about this, it could come off like the partner that I was with was the one making me feel like this, that, you know, he, you know, didn't love me for who I was. That is not the case. Just want to put that out there. This had everything to do with me and my fears of not being lovable and, you know, being abandoned and all of that. This has nothing to do with how they were treating me. While we were not compatible, and I think he would even say that. 
Uh, we really wanted to be compatible, but we just weren't compatible. And because we weren't compatible, I was just stuffing myself into this mold because I could not take another failed relationship. I was like, this has to work. And in order for things to work, sometimes you have to make sac sacrifices in relationships, right? Like, I'm, I think most people will tell you that, you know, there, with every relationship, there's a sacrifice and compromise. I started sacrificing way too much. And again, this, these are not things my partner asked me to do. It was just me. But I, I don't really know how to describe it other than just I was in the worst mental space of my life because... You know, while being on the road was really cool and I got to see the Grand Canyon and I got to spend like three weeks on the Oregon coast and I got to do all of these really cool things, I was also uh, cut off from my friends, cut off from my family and like just not, I'm a person that's always around my friends and family and to be that far away from them was really, really hard on me. And then I also like, we lived in a 20 foot travel trailer. I couldn't bring all my clothes that make me feel like myself. I couldn't bring my decorations that make me feel like myself. Like all of these things, while they seem so small and so, what's the word? They seem like things that just aid to vanity, but it's also like self-expression. And that's what I kept telling myself. I was like, oh, that's where materialistic. It seems so materialistic and maybe it is, but my things make me feel like myself. This is what makes me feel like safe and like home, like this is my space. My outfits are how, my self-expression, like, and I just didn't have any of that because of the life choices that I made. So it got really hard and honestly it got really dark. And I, I think you guys can understand why I wouldn't want to make content, especially because my platform has been built on authenticity and has been built on believing in yourself and feeling like you're enough and more than enough and radical self-love and I felt none of those things and then when you get so dark like in such a place that then when I thought about creating content when I thought about like oh this would be a fun idea for even just an Instagram post or even when I did post on Instagram it was the imposter syndrome of this is stupid nobody cares there's a million people doing this you just look like you're attention grabbing like just the most gnarly things being said to myself by myself you know pretty much all of this was because i was so desperate to stay in the relationship i wanted it to work so bad because I did love him like we we are in a good place as exes where we realize that we love each other we are just not compatible but especially having so many long-term relationships as a now 30 year old woman the societal pressure gets a little much <laughs> gets a little what are you doing what are you doing, bestie? Why aren't you married yet? Why can't you lock down a person? Why haven't you been able to be stable in a relationship for more than two years? More than two and a half years? More than three years? So that compounded with me loving this person and wanting to be with them and wanting to want this life uh, just really got me into a crazy space where I was sacrificing too much. And it wasn't until I had a breakthrough because we did try everything. I went to therapy, he went to therapy, we went to couples therapy. We tried so many things. We moved out of the trailer because obviously living in that close quarters when your mental health is not great is uh, gnarly to say the least. Um, we tried everything and I just completely got to a breaking point, like an absolute breaking point to where then finally when the relationship ended, it was like somebody was like holding me underwater. And then once that relationship ended, they just grabbed me and pulled me out. It was really fucking crazy. And I knew that I needed to move home 
and leaving Canada was so hard for so many reasons. I had been working towards living in Canada for years and I love Canada and I love the friends that I made there and the political space in America. While Canada is not perfect, do not get me wrong, Canada's worse than a lot of people think that Canada is, but it's still better than the States. Uh, for so many reasons, I did not want to move, can move away from Canada, but also being so separated from my friends and family. Like, besides a small handful of my friends, my close friends, all of my friends and family, my entire network is in my hometown that I'm currently back in. And it was also weird things, like weird timing things where whenever I would go to get a promotion at a job in Canada, something would come up and I couldn't take it. And that happened three times, three times. So it kind of was like the universe was like, don't stay here, don't stay here, go home, go home to your family, go home to your niece, go home to your friends, your lifelong friends that you haven't gotten to really spend time with the last uh, eight years, because I haven't lived in my hometown since I was 21, 22. So yeah, it just, got really crazy and then I was living with my parents. I moved back home at the beginning of summer and lived with my parents, which I feel very grateful that I have parents and I have family that are always willing to take me in and always have a spot for me. So I'm very grateful for that. But obviously, uh, <laughs> living with your parents as a 30 year old woman is not, after everything, after everything was not ideal. So I got a job, I saved up, and I have now been in this place for just over two weeks. Um, I don't think I have ever set up a house as quickly as, quickly as I have. And it feels so good. I mean, I, the week that I was like moving in and decorating, I would be listening to music and dancing and setting up my space and I would just start crying because I finally felt so much relief that I wasn't in that situation anymore. Like I have my own agency again, I have my own space again. I'm not trying to fit myself into a mold that I don't belong in. I'm not trying to fit myself into a relationship that isn't serving either of us anymore. I just am like free. <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy. And then I, I started thinking about it that like, it was really a lot of shame that kept me from posting on YouTube and on Instagram because I had just let myself go so far. I just got myself into such a shame spiral of like, this is embarrassing. Like it is embarrassing that you are in this state right now. And like, you should be ashamed of yourself for letting yourself get into this state as a grown woman. Like it, in every way, it got so nasty. But all of that is to say, that's what happened. <laughs> that's how my last four years have been. Well, three, and then the pandemic was, pandemic was before that. But I was talking to one of my friends and I think the happiest that I ever was, was when I had my apartment right before I moved to Canada. When I lived by myself in my apartment in Canada. Oh, and that was the other thing, and I know I'll get questions on it. I had to rehome my cat, too, in that process. Biscuit, and I know she's in a good home. I know the people that took her. Um, I know she's happy, but that was one of, like, I don't want to be hyperbolic, but if you're a pet owner, like, she was a soul cat, you know what I mean? Like, having to rehome and having to make that decision was heart wrenching like I still can't think about her without crying even though she's like she's not dead she's having a great life like she's fine but yeah I also had to rehome my cat 
biscuit which is so sad yeah i don't even know where i'm going with any of this now all of this is to say i was the happiest that i was in my apartment by myself the only thing that didn't make me happy was covid obviously and like being separated from my partner um and now i'm living by myself and don't have a partner and don't have to worry about any of that and plan on getting another cat very soon and i'm just finally feeling so good like feeling so much better the way that i described it to my friends is like i feel like i've been buried for the last three years and like the breakup was kind of like the first like unearthing and now i feel like i'm starting to actually like bloom like I i'm getting some color back i'm getting you know some leaves and shoots and sprouts and just whoop. And, and i'm also so excited because like so much has changed i crochet now I'm a Swifty now. Bet you didn't have that on your kitty snack bingo card unless you were, you know, following me on Instagram at the start of my exploring Swifty dumb. And I would love, I would love to do a video about my Swifty journey. And I'm going to. And I know a lot of you guys probably hate Taylor Swift, uh, but I know that there's some Swifties on here too. Or just some Swift neutral people that would enjoy hearing that. But <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I feel like I'm getting my style back again. I feel like I'm comfortable with makeup again. I really didn't know after the beauty space kind of died, like around the pandemic and like right before, I really didn't know how to do my makeup anymore. And I feel like now I'm at a place where one, I'm way, way more comfortable without makeup. Two, I know how I want to experiment with makeup. I know what I like to do with my makeup now. Um, separating, you know, 2016 to 2018 kitty snacks makeup to still incorporating some dead girl glam, but having it be, you know, this version of kitty snacks makeup. I'm really excited about makeup again. I'm really excited about like hair again. And I'm just excited to share again, which, feels really big and feels really nice. He <laughs> he whoops my camera overheated and now I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, basically TLDR. I was really depressed in a really bad space and now I have my own space and I feel inspired to make content again and things have changed and I'm really excited. And like I just also have to thank y'all for all the messages on my Instagram like once I posted on my story, the excitement, the like warmth and the welcome and just the hype was, to be honest, super, super much needed. Like after telling myself for, you know, a year and a half, two years that, cause like, I get it. Social media sucks, I get it. I never went back to TikTok. There's, I never went to Twitter, like I, know that parasocial relationships are weird and social media sucks but also it does genuinely help people and including myself like i'm not I, I don't watch tv i watch youtube that's what i watch like after telling myself for so long that my content was stupid and it wasn't needed and that's just all in the past even though like my youtube channel is the single thing that i have worked at the longest in my life I've never had a job as long as I've had a YouTube channel. I've never had like a career or like gone to school. Like my YouTube channel is the thing that I have worked on since I was 20, like 10 years I've had this YouTube channel. It's, it, it's crazy. So to get messages, you know, especially after I kind of gave you guys a little bit, I posted again being like, here's a TLDR. I lost myself and now I'm finding myself. To get messages being like, I'm going through a similar thing or, and this gives me hope and like getting messages like that really kind of grounded me in a way that I really, really needed. And I just can't thank you guys enough for that. It's just, it's a lot and I feel very grateful for this community 
and you know when people like in my real life would ask me about my YouTube channel and stuff that's what I would say is that like you know I'm stepping away from it for right now but I feel really grateful and also really sad that I'm leaving this community that like I know you all ride so hard for me and I ride so hard for you guys like I, I felt so bad leaving you guys but I am so appreciative that I know you guys understand I know that y'all get it and I just love this community so much and I'm so excited to start posting again and to start kind of a new era of this community and I have no idea what it's gonna look like it's who knows probably maybe some cooking content again some beauty content I don't really want to do fashion content because it when I was doing that at the height of TikTok days it was very wasteful both for my own money and just cycling through trends so while I do want to do things like thrifting and DIY and stuff and like outfit ideas um, fashion is probably not something I'll do a ton of because your girl your girl's got rent to pay okay so we'll see about that but yeah and just I really want to focus on sex positivity again like like I did with with um, sexy Sundays and having more earnest conversations with you guys and learning together um, so that's kind of what my plan is that's what I'm thinking let me know I feel this feels crazy this feels crazy I haven't posted in two years on this YouTube channel what the fuck Ugh. so I guess that's all I have to say I could ramble um, and I think that I have been but I think I'm gonna stop this video here so that way I can edit it and upload it as soon as possible because I'm just so excited again to post and to connect with you guys so that's my long-winded update thank you for listening I'm sorry if that was heavier than what maybe you anticipated um, but I hope you feel good at the end of it and I hope you're as excited as I am and please send me any and all ideas for content that you would like to see whether it's like silly or serious just send it all my way I would love to do an apartment tour as well this is my cute little living room um, so yeah I can't wait to talk about decorating and where I got things and you know kind of how I've been scrappy in furnishing my apartment with not the biggest budget in the world so yeah okay I'm rambling again I love you guys so much I love y'all so much thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye